basically Tom and I uh, started playing when we were 14 and 12 and um, trust me we weren't anywhere close to being as good as we are today uh, and, and the reason for that is we had some real good uh, instructors. My dad uh, wanted us to go get the best instruction that we could get and um, so I would encourage you all to do that because this game is just too hard to try to you know do it on your own and uh, there's a couple books that I would highly recommend uh, until his book and my book come out. Uh, Tom Watson wrote a book called Getting Up and Down on the Short Game and that's a great book. It's, it's maybe out of print now. It's, I think it may have just gone out of print but that's a fantastic book. It's very simple and uh, it will, it's, it's just great. I mean, it's a great book. And uh, then Ben Hogan wrote a book called The Five Lessons, uh, The Modern Fundamentals of Golf, and that's a terrific book too. And I was, uh, I was with Jim McLean uh, about a year ago, and he, we were talking, and, and, and basically there's probably more people, uh, there's more people that have, that have read that book uh, book of uh, the tour players, they have that book in their in their bag, more of them that have it in their bag than any, any of the other people, or any, any, other, any other book. And uh, even today, now that book is 50 years old, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a great book. So I would highly recommend that. And uh, also, um, just to give you an idea uh, about uh, about how to really be a more competitive player would be to really work on your short game. Putting, chipping, pitching the ball. I know that I did that a lot when I was a little guy and, uh, and I really worked hard on my putting and, 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 and chipping and I know Tom did too. Tom probably worked a little more on his swing than I did. That's why that golf swing looks so perfect. But, uh, but anyway, we both were pretty good putters and chippers growing up. I'm just going to try to go through uh, a couple things, um, a couple things today with putting. Okay. Um, when I when I get up to putt, and excuse me just for a second. Hey Bruce, I'm okay. I'm okay. If Are you, you want to, if you want to stay, you can stay. If you want yeah, to go, I'd like to hear you anyway. Okay. Okay. No worries. Um, so basically, when I putt the ball, I want to, and I have these balls kind of up here, set up here for a reason, uh, and I'll tell you about it in a second as far as the full swing goes. But when I set up to putt, I want to have, when I get set up to putt, I see a lot of people, even the best players that I've ever worked with, including my brother and, and Steve Jones and Lorena Ochoa and, uh, you know, people like that, girls like that. Another girl, Michaela Parmlet, who won the NCAA, Women's NCAA Championship, uh, she was, nobody gets the putter blade lined up exactly perfect every time. And so, one thing I would highly recommend you do is make sure that that putter blade is going where you want it to go. Okay, what, you know, and I would I would recommend that you come back here because you're not going to have a you know professional or your dad or your mom or whoever standing behind you all the time saying, hey, that putter is lined up straight. Okay, so I would highly recommend that you do that. And if you know that you know that that putter blade is square, the ball is going to roll better off the off the putter head. And, it, you know, like I, one of my guys, and it might have been Spencer the other day, but anyway, his ball was rolling so good, it just went, it was just kind of went right into the hole. I mean, it just dove into the hole. So you can putt good if your putter blade's over here like this, but you've got to go across like this so the ball's spinning. It's not, it's not going end over end. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so really lining that putter blade up square is a huge thing. Another thing that I see a lot of uh, my students doing, and my juniors and and, and, and uh, old, older folks like me is when they putt, they go here like this and they take a real big backstroke and then they come through here and, and go this way with their, with their hands. And uh, that's not, that ball's not gonna roll very good that way. And it's, not, it's, hard to, it's hard to get the putter back here and then be able to keep the blade square going through if you've got it back, going back too far, okay? So, a little shorter on that backstroke, a little more through, and trying to feel like your hands are going through a little bit ahead of the ball and the putter head rather than behind. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Okay, then one other thing here is 
what I try to do, and I'll, tur I'll try to turn around where you guys can see what I'm doing. But the other thing is, you know, I see a lot of people, they'll be standing way back here like this, and their eyes are in here like this. Or they might even be like this, and their eyes are way out here. Um, you know, a lot of times you'll hear guys on, on the tour saying, boy, I could really see the line today. Well, the best way I know to do that is to try to get your eyes over that line a little bit more this way. Does that, everybody, does that make sense to everybody? And so if I've got my eyes right over that ball, and actually they're just behind the ball, but they're over an extension of that line. In other words, if you, if you guys can see me over here, my eyes are back here a little bit. They're not right over the ball like that. They're just back here a little bit. And I think most good putters are like that. But anyway, uh, and now I now when I look when I'm looking down the line that I'm trying to putt on, my eyes are right over that line that I'm trying to putt on. So that's a that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Um, now, what I what I would like to do is um, I'm going to use one of Tom's clubs here. And wow, these are good looking clubs. How do you ever miss them? Huh? It's easy. <laughs> Okay, now let's talk about let's talk about chipping. Okay, you know that's that's. We'll, I'll ask for some questions in a minute. In fact, why don't we why don't I ask some questions right now? Anybody have any questions on putting? Let me tell you something. I know there's a lot more to putting, but what we want to try to do is hit, hit on some highlights. Let you watch Tom hit some good some. His this golf swing is fantastic. You know to watch this thing. But um, and then hit on the highlights, and then we want to ask some questions of you guys, and we're going to talk a little bit more about competing after Tom hits a little bit, okay? Any questions on putting? No questions, yes, sir. You know, when that really works so well on short putts. It but does? If, if I have a long putt, I'm short every single time. You mean when you're taking it back a little shorter? Yeah. Well, here's what I, here's what, and, and, and this is kind of, we're gonna talk about how to practice later, but we'll get into putting right now and talk about how to putt better is, you know what what you want to do is start with short putts and i'm talking to you now doug but short start with short putts and then work your way back gradually you know just or you know just keep backing away from the hole like this and then you're you know i don't want you to take it back real short the whole time you're gonna you're gonna go back a little farther for a longer putt but i think if you think about really accelerating the putter more than you do about taking the putter back far you're going to be a lot better off. And so that's how I would do that, is I would start short putts and then just gradually work your way back from the hole, you know? Come out here late when nobody's around and practice a lot, you know? Does that, does that yep. answer your question? Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Doug. I've got an eight iron here, okay? But one of the things that, I, that I, was amazing to me when I, when I first went on the tour, and before Tom got out there, um, I was amazed that I would, most of the time, the, the, the putting green would be in front of the clubhouse, okay? It would be in front of the clubhouse over here. And so we'd walk in there, and I'd see the best players. And today it would be the Jim Furyk and the, you know, uh, like Fred Couples. I mean, Fred's in the, in the Champions Tour now. But it'd be the top players of the day would be out there hitting these little seven iron chip shots, okay? And guys like... Um, you know, I'm trying to come up with some names that you young people will know, you know, not, not Jack Nicholas, but he, he was, he was out there a little bit. He did most of his practicing away from the golf course. He'd go to another golf course close there because he, 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 everybody would be all over him, you know, but anyway, it would be the top players like Ricky Fowler, you know, just think of the top players today, Nick, Nick Watney, whoever, and they'd be standing out there hitting these little seven iron chip shots on this green and uh, I'd come back out after I get through having lunch and they'd still be do hitting that same shot. And I'm going, wow. They said, I can't believe that these guys would spend that much time just hitting that same shot when you might hit that one time in a round or maybe one time every two or three rounds. <clears throat> well, basically what that is, if you, can, if you hit that shot and you know how to hit that shot, that's basically the same position you're going to be in when you hit all your shots. When you hit, the, when you hit your full shots, you're gonna, your hand should be ahead of that ball a little bit and, and, uh, and down low through the shot. And so anyway, um, now I see a lot of the young guys, okay, there's some young guys here. I see a lot of the young guys trying to hit this, you know, when I coached at Grand Canyon there, 
I'd see these guys, they'd all be practicing these high shots, these high looper sh looping shots here. And they take a great big swing and swing at it and hit that shot. And I'm telling you, you have to you have to hit that shot once in a while. But for you young guys, I would I would practice a lot of that seven iron chip shots, hitting that ball low, and uh, and and not taking the club back so far. And then when you want to hit it higher, uh, just you still don't have to take the club back so far. You can open the club face up a little bit. Let's say I've got let's say I've got this. Uh, See, I've got this 56 here, okay, and I want to hit it high. I can still hit the ball real high and real soft by taking the club right here, accelerating the club, and keeping the face open like this. I can hit the ball up just as high and just as soft as somebody taking the club way back here, except under pressure, I can do that time after time after time, where if I've got the club going way back here, I can still do that. I can still hit that shot, but under pressure, I want to hit something that I know that I can, that I'm going to hit really good. Does that make sense? And that's where I'm trying to go with you guys, especially you juniors that are really trying to be the best player you can be, and and uh, and you, and you other adults here, that you know it's the same way with you guys. You're going to hit that shot a lot better and, and beat the guys that you know you're forcing. You're going to beat those guys, you know. So, um, any questions on that? I know I went from the chip to the pitch, and the chip shot is, is we're trying to play it off your back foot a little bit more here, and chip, you know, running the ball. And I'm telling you, you young guys are really, are really cheating yourselves if you don't hit that shot some. And you just stand there and hit those, hit those great, uh, those lob shots, that's all you do. You're gonna, you're gonna be cheating yourselves, okay? Um, any questions on that, like chipping, pitching? Um, Maybe I would say this, it's a little difficult to tell you exactly what club to hit when you hit it, but I would just say this, is that <clears throat> I'll try to hit the ball low and I'll try to hit it off my back foot as much as I can, whenever I can. Uh, but, you know, sometimes I have to go up high, then I'll get the ball up more on my front foot and, and hit that high soft shot, okay? But the, you just have to practice yourselves and figure out what club is it works right. The one thing I will say is that if you're on a real fast green going downhill, uh, let's say you've got your, your, your level, okay, and you've got, you're just off the edge of the green, pin's way back there, it's 100 feet back there, okay? Well, you can hit, let's say I decide I want to hit it six iron and I want to chip it, chip it right up the hill and, and, and back to the hole, okay? But if the, if the, pin, if the green's going like this and I got a real fast green, I can't hit a six iron, you know, with that same shot. I'm going to have to hit a seven iron, maybe an eight iron. Okay, because it's the ball's really going to run out, and it'd be just the opposite of that if I, if I, um, you know, if I'm going uphill, and I'm I'm hit a seven iron shot. If I'm going way uphill, I might hit a, you know, I might hit a six iron. Does that make sense, you guys? How that how that would work, and how you need a little more loft or less loft and stuff like that. Okay, okay. Um, now let's talk about the talk about the golf swing here, and I'll introduce my brother here in a second. Um, here, what I got these balls set up here like this, and, and Tom and I did this a lot when we were when we were younger. Um, but the way the reason I got these balls set up like this, first of all, you young guys are probably having and ladies have probably have these sticks, right? So that, they're better because if you hit this club right here, you're going to break a stick instead of breaking the club. You know, so mom and dad will probably appreciate that if you, you don't do that. But here's the thing. <coughs> um, Basically, when you watch Tom swing here in a minute, you're, you're going to see you're going to see um, him taking the club back pretty straight, okay, to right about here. Now, most of you guys and, and most of you, you know, guys and gals here, okay, Tom, Tom and I did this, and we're we're always we're trying we we always did this a little too much, okay. If you look a picture of Luke Donald, he he's got he's in the he's in the magazine with his with his club face like this. Okay, Tom and I are always trying to get this, you know, this club to be a little more this way, going back. Now, most of you, you, most of you here today, are gonna be better off if the club face is a little bit closer. Oh, yeah. Okay, and I can give you some really great names of guys that have been that way, and uh, 
you know, Tom Weisskopf, and the, you, know, you young guys aren't going to know who Tom Weisskopf is, but Tom Weisskopf and Lee Trevino, and there's on and on and on about, uh, you know, Watson was a little bit shut up the top. Uh, a lot of the young guys, I don't know, I haven't watched the young guys. Tom could probably tell you more than, than I could about the young guys, but, uh, but I'm here to tell you that, it, especially if you fade the ball, okay, if you fade the ball, you want to have your grip, and I want to talk about the grip just a little bit. You want to have your grip pretty strong, okay? And I have to see you guys to play, but I'm, as a general rule, you want to have your left hand on that club pretty strong over this way as opposed to more like this. And I'm sorry I'm in the shade here, you guys, but but instead of instead of here, you want to be over here a little bit more. Does that make, does that make sense to everybody? Okay, and so I want to have the grip there. I want to have my width of my stance about shoulder width apart. Okay, so that's the inside here and the outside here. And one of the guys, uh, if you watch guys play, Tiger Woods, when he first came on the tour, his stance was great. I mean, it was great. Um, and he, he, everybody said, well, what a wide stance he had, but he really doesn't have a wide stance. He's had a, he has the best stance, I think, of any guy I've ever seen. But there's a lot of guys out there. If you look at, you look at the guys, and especially like Butch Harmon, I, I don't, you know, I know Butch a little bit, not much, Tom knows Butch. But I see in his guys, I see those guys setting up with their stance really good. I'm trying to think, Adam Scott was, was working with Butch for a while, and Greg Norman was, a, before, way back, Greg Norman was, was he, he, he said one of the biggest things that helped him was getting his feet wider. Um, so, and, and then Tiger, and then Adam Scott, and I don't know, I'm trying to think who, he, he, had, he was Mickelson, he, Mickelson was uh, working with, so Mick, Phil will probably end up having his stance a little bit better too. But you width your stance wide, and then the other thing, when you're swinging back, you really want to get your weight back. When you watch Tom swing, you'll see his left shoulder will get back behind that ball, and he'll, his chest will get back over his right thigh, and then when he swings through, he's going to extend through here and keep his keep his left arm nice and straight and finish up, finish to the, you know, make a good finish, hold his finish. So anyway, do you guys have any? Am I? That makes sense to everybody. You guys understand kind of what I'm saying there? Okay. Um, Tom, you want to you want to throw anything in there? Except that, and I'll just say one thing. You know, one when you watch him swing and you watch the guys on the tour and the ladies on the tour, you look at those swings and they go, "Wow, that looks great." You know. But the thing is, what you don't realize is the thousands and thousands of hours that they've put in uh, practicing. And practicing, like I said, that, that little chip shot, uh, those little pitch shots that I was showing you. And the one thing, if you guys really want to, and ladies want to be really competitive, putt a lot, chip a lot, pitch a lot, hit your bunker shots, hit a lot of shots from, from here to those pins right there. And, you know, sometimes you can, your practice facility is hard to find a place like that where you can, where you can hit shots like that. So when you go out and play, Try to go out and play late in the day where when nobody's around and you can you can hit a bunch of shots. You know that's how that's how he and I got got good is we we went out there and on, a, on the golf course by ourselves and and hit shots whether it was real early in the morning or at the end of the day. So uh, anyway, Tommy, you got any you got anything you want to throw in here? This is my brother Tom, Phoenix Open former, former Phoenix Open champion, uh, World Series of Golf, LA Open, on and on and on. No, no, no. Just, <laughs> <laughs> he's a uh, five-time PGA Tour champion, and uh, and Tom's won uh, five tournaments in the uh, in the senior tour, including the Australian PGA. And what, what do you got to say, buddy? You got no, anything? I, I, that, sure, that's pretty good. Uh, when we started, things were a lot different. You know, the instruction. Uh, you know, there were some good teachers, but there's a, a lot more good teachers now than there are than there were then. Um, we just, you know, we just kind of went out and played. We, we had, we got, we'd have a lesson every once in a while, and then we'd go out and play, see what works, see what didn't. Um, but I think the biggest thing that, if I if I had it to do over again, the biggest thing I would do is I'd, I'd chip and I'd putt a lot more. You know, I enjoyed hitting golf balls uh, a lot, so I ended up hitting a lot of golf balls. And you know, I kind of neglected the, the chipping and putting, and um, so that that's always been kind of not my strong suit. Uh, I've always hit the ball better than I have chipped and putted. 
Um, but the thing about it is, if you if you chip and putt really good, you know, there's so many guys that I can name where, you know, on their off days, when they if they chip and they they're, they're going to chip and they're going to putt really good. Their good days when they hit the ball good, they're going to shoot five or six under. Their bad days, their bad ball striking days, they're going to shoot two or three under. Where for me, it was always, you know, if I if I had a, a decent putting day, chipping day, you know, I, I'd shoot four or five under. But if I had a bad chipping and putting day, I might shoot one or two over. So you can just save so many shots, and and that's the key to this. The key to this game is to get it in the hole as soon as you can. It's not how pretty it looks. It's not. Um, you, you don't have to swing exactly like Tiger Woods. You don't have to hit it like Tiger Woods. Um, your strengths are going to be different than the fellow that's next to your strengths. You just have to figure out what your strengths are. Um, make sure you keep those areas strong, but improve on on what you feel you don't. Um, you know, if you're a good ball hitter, you know, make sure you keep, make sure you work on ball hitting, but at the same time, work on chipping and putting, because you're not going to hit 18 greens. You know, I think our statistics, uh, even on the regular tour now, I think the best that those guys do, they average like 15 greens around. And that's the best. So, you know, you're going to miss three or four greens, whatever. If, if you know, if you miss, if you if you have an idea that you're, if you miss a green, you're going to get it up and down, I can promise you it's a lot easier to hit that shot into the green, to hit, to hit an iron shot. If you're worried about missing a green, if you're worried about your short game, you don't feel like you're, you know, you're as quite as strong on your short game, all of a sudden it puts a lot more pressure on hitting that ball on the green. Um, and I know it's kind of hard to explain, but it, it just happens. You know, I've been playing for, <laughs> I've been playing for, what, 45 years, I guess. And, you know, the, the times when I struggle is, if I, if I don't feel like my short game is very good, it puts a lot. It puts a lot of pressure on on the on your big game. You know, you feel like you have to hit it in here like this to make a birdie, uh, and it just puts a lot of pressure that you don't really need. If if you know that you're putting good, if you know that you're chipping good, you don't care if you have a putt from here to the chair. You know, a 25, 30 footer. You're gonna make. You might make a couple of those. So, I, I guess I'm just trying to stress that. You know, make sure you're. This game is all about scoring. You know, it's and not every not, you're not going to have great days all the time, ball hitting wise. So you, you really need to work on on the scoring aspect of it. Um, you know, and, um, but you know, I think I think the thing that um, that people recognize mostly in my swing is kind of the tempo and the rhythm, and that's like the speed of your swing. You know, your the, the pace that you swing the club back and, and you swing it down. You know, when I, when I used to do a lot of um, kids' clinics, I can't do it anymore because there aren't any speedometers like that anymore. <laughs> but the old speedometers used to go, you know, the, the, the thing would go zero, zero to 60, you know, whatever. Um, but, for me to get to a, get through to a kid was okay you watched you watch a, a speedometer it starts from zero and it kind of builds speed 10 20 30 40 50 it builds speed as you go back right and when it gets up to the top near the top it does what almost stops it goes right? zero it almost stops so it, again it's back almost back to zero I'm gonna say that it is back to zero you're going from this way to this way. And what I see a lot of golfers doing is their zero to 60 is really quick up here. 
Now it's good in cars, not good in golf swings. You know, you want you you're ideally you'd like to go, you, you'd like to get a set a nice rhythm in your swing going back. And what that what that allows is allows you to turn your body, get your body coiled, turn into your right side. And then once it gets up to the top, it's back at zero again, right? So you want to build speed coming down to where the big numbers up here, not the big numbers up here. Because if the big numbers up here, it gets smaller as you go, as you go through the. Once you've expended all your energy up here, now you're just hanging on trying to just hit the shot. So ideally you want to, you know, that change in direction. I, to me, that's the most important part of a golf swing. Change in direction. That's where I see most, most amateurs that I play with, even a lot of the professionals I play with. When they get off, it's their change of direction. It's that it's that move from the top of their swing. You know, you the, the the simplest way when I was a kid, my old teacher used to say, "Okay, the club, the swing starts <coughs> with the club head. Club head starts everything coming back. It, 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 you know, it just goes right up your your hands, shoulders, everything, and then it pulls your your lower body." Um, that's the kind of the last thing that moves, and then on the downswing, it's all it's the opposite. This starts, and this is the this is kind of the last part. That's where you get all your speed in your swing. That's where you get all your distance. So, you know, you just it's it's just really important. Um, ideally, you know, a tempo. You know, if you can think of tempo when you're when you're hitting your shot when you're practicing develop your own tempo, you know, like my tempo is a lot different than uh, a Tiger Woods or a Lanny Watkins or somebody that's Tom Watson. They're all, they're all quick, you know, they swing quickly and that's, that's great for them. They, they understand that. So, and then, you know, if you talk about a, a guy like, um, uh, I don't even know anymore who the young guys are that would have a, a, a more of a because they all hit it so hard anymore. I don't see a lot of uh, the tempos have all gotten a lot quicker because it's a different game now. It's more of a power game now than when I when I first started. Um, when I first started, nobody worked out. You know, Gary Player was the only guy that worked out. Um, in mm. fact, they told us not to. Um, so. That, I think that's a different. I think players are stronger now. Everybody I see that that is playing golf, they're they're working out. They're getting trying to get stronger, which is a great idea. I mean, uh, I wish I would have done that when I was a kid. But you know, I think I've gotten off on a tangent. But I just think you know, it, it, you want to build your speed. You want to build your swing around a good tempo, a good turn going back, um, because that that will allow you to hit the ball with some energy. Um, you know, I see a lot of people where they don't turn, they just lift the club. Um, so now you've got basically nothing to hit it with on your downswing. You know, that's why Paul talks about so much about turning your turning your body going back, turning your chest. Anything anything that you can anything that works for you, there's a lot of different, a, a lot of different ways to do it, but you know I've got about four things that I think of when I, when one of them doesn't work, and then I just go to another one. But it's just a, it's just a matter of getting this your upper body turned. You know, like Paul said, you know you can get your left shoulder underneath your chin. Um, I think, and sometimes I think of trying to get my right shoulder back behind me. You know, I turn my chest. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. It's just that's a prerequisite. You know, you can't. You're not going to make a good swing if just your hands and your arms go up this way, unless you're Freddie Couples. <laughs> you got the best hands in the yeah. world. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, it's just it's everybody's swing doesn't have to look the same. You know, we're not all built the same. Um, 
but for the, the kids, when you, if you go out and you watch a tournament, or even on TV, you find somebody that has your kind of stature, you know, your height, you know, your build, your shoulder width, uh, and kind of watch them. You know, it doesn't do, it doesn't do a t yeah. tall guy any good to go watch Corey Pavin, okay. or it doesn't. It doesn't help a, a, sh a, a shorter guy watch a Nick Watney or, or Bill Haas. I mean, you want to try and build your swing around somebody that looks like you. Somebody has the same build as you do. Um, because, you know, you're, how you're built determines how you're going to swing. I think that's yeah, that, that's great. And you know what I, I what I would say to that is that when I went when I went to the Phoenix Open, I would go find the guy with the best golf swing. That, that happened to be a guy named Gene Littler. And if any if go go Google him and, and check it out, see if you can see Gene Littler swing when he was when he was playing good. But that's that's and like Tom, a lot of people would go out and just watch him swing. That was, he was Tom was the Gene Littler of my of our day. Uh, but go watch, if you're going to go watch a tall guy, watch the best guy that's got the best swing, whether it's Ernie Els or Nick Watney or, or Adam Scott or whoever you think's got the best swing. And if you're a little shorter, then go watch Luke Donald or, uh, you know, watch somebody like that. Um, one of the things Tom's really made a good point a minute ago when he talked about, you know, when you go back and you're going back like 5, 10, 15, but up to 50 up here. Now, once you get back, once you start down, you don't want to go from zero to 80 from here to here. You want to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. You really want to feel like you got the club moving the fastest at the ball or even past the ball. You know, you really want to get that club moving the fastest right down there into your field, not from the top down. And boy, I'll tell you what, whether you're whether you're 14 or you're 58, you know, um, that's a big deal. And that's one of the things that's been, he's been so good at, his tempo has been so good through the years. And his, and technically he's really good too. And Tom kind of says, you know, uh, he, he's technically he's been so good that it's not a big deal to him. But a lot of the guys, if you watch a lot of the other guys out there on the practice team, they're going back up here and they're trying to check and see where they are up here, trying to get good positions. I think that's I think that's good for you to do. I mean, like I said, he's his golf swing has been so good for so long. He doesn't have to think too much about it. Now, competition. Let's talk about competition a little bit. Okay, Tommy, Tom hit the nail on the head, you guys. And I, you know, coaching college golf. Uh, I got a chance to kind of look back into when Tom and I were going to Arizona State, playing there, and um, kind of look at these young guys, and I'm telling you, you know, nobody's got great golf swings. Um, none of those guys really are great, but I'll tell you one thing, the thing, the difference between the American, American young players, men and women, and the Europeans are that their postures aren't as good. Americans aren't, for the most part. I, I, we, when we did that junior clinic down in Tucson, Andrew, we, we, we brought that song. And, uh, and, and anyway, you know, having a good posture, standing up to the ball, you know, correctly with your knees slightly flexed and your rear end out, and, you know, being up pretty tall here um, with your chin up, that's a really important. If you're standing up to the ball, you know, like this, trying to hit the ball, you may be a great athlete. But you're not going to be able to play as well as a guy that's that's standing up to the ball correctly, and has got good posture. Um, so that's a huge thing, and that's a, that's what I try to work on a lot of my juniors. I try to work on getting them to stand up to the ball correctly, gripping the club correctly, um, you know, and then and then take starting the club back correctly. All those things are really really important. And Tommy Tom does that so well. He doesn't think much about that anymore, you know. Uh, yeah, Bruce, go ahead. Yeah, I was asking, do you think of any kind of cadence in your swing to keep it consistent? You, you sure? Have the same swing you sure? Yeah, you, you definitely can. Okay. I mean, it's a. What's your favorite song? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but. You know, the some of the guys my age and stuff will know a guy by the name of Jerry Hurd. And he always whistled when he played. And he had a beautiful rhythmic swing. and But he, you never heard him 
you never saw him play golf without whistling. Yeah. But so, and you can do that in your head. You know, you can, and it doesn't have to be a song. It can be a, a one-two. You know, just just one, two. You know, just anything that anything that gets you into a a, a rhythm. You know, and it's um, you know one, two, three. I mean, it's. Yeah. That guys have been doing that forever. I mean, I, you know, I talked to a lot of the older guys, and that's what they say they would do. You know, if they got off, they would first thing they would do was to make sure that you know their their tempo was okay. But the way I when 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 I used to watch Nicholas and drive me nuts because he was real deliberate, real slow, and. A lot of it is what Paul was saying just now is he was going through his checklist making sure that everything he could control before the club started back was in the right spot. You know, if he was addressed proper if he was addressed properly, his grip was good, his his um, posture. posture, his aim, all that stuff. All that stuff if it was good or if it was where it should be, he had a great chance of hitting a good shot even if he didn't make his best swing. But if you get in there and you're you're trying to go this way and your feet are this way or your feet are this way, you've got to make up for it somewhere in your swing. So, um, you know, unless, unless you're like a Trevino or somebody that all they wanted to do was hit it one way. They just wanted to hit a fade. So now, their feet, they're going to aim everything up basically left of their target, which allows the club to go outside and across. So that it has to go that way. But, you know, for the most part, I think everybody, what you want to do is you want to set up into a neutral position. Um, and if you can get set up in a good position, uh, good posture, good alignment, good grip, all those things that you can control before the club starts going back. You don't have to make a great swing to hit a good shot, but if you if you program the computer improperly, if you're aiming over here or over here trying to hit it this way, you've got to make up somewhere in your swing. Um, you, you know, so that's the other thing. I, what I was going to say is, say you're out on the golf course and you hit a bad shot, it might not be your swing. Most, most, most likely it's not your swing. It's how you got into that position to hit that shot. You know, don't go, so if you, if you hit a couple bad shots, all of a sudden don't go, oh man, what did I do here? What did I do here? You know, start by, okay, let me make sure that I, I, I'm aimed in the right spot. You know, make sure that I'm, my posture's good, I've got good width on my, with my feet and everything. That's the first thing to look for. Don't just assume that you've made a mistake in your swing. You know, it, it probably isn't. It probably isn't the swing itself. It's how you approach that shot. Yeah. You know, and for for the kids that are that kids that are playing, you know, competitive golf and stuff, um, um, kind of have a checklist. You know, after you've hit a shot and, and it didn't come off quite like you wanted to, instead of getting upset with it, okay, go, just kind of go back through your checklist and go, okay, do you think I was aimed okay? Do you think my posture was good? Go over that checklist and not get upset. Getting upset is going to make it that next shot harder. Where this way, when you get up over that next shot, you're going to go, you know what, I, I think I was maybe aimed a little bit to the right on that last shot. That's why I miss hit it. Miss, it didn't go where I wanted to. But, um, you know, there's, there's a lot to golf, but I think we all make it a lot more difficult than it really is. You know, it's, it's basically just getting, getting set up to the shot and then turning back and turning through. You know, you want to keep, say this is your spine, you want to keep that thing pretty much right there all the way through your swing. 
it doesn't want to go this way and it doesn't want to go this way. The more you make those moves, the more you've got to compensate, you've got to make up for it somewhere else. So you're better off if you just if you just stand tall. And now all you're going to try and do is you're going to try and turn your shoulders around your spine going back this way. And on your forward swing, you're just going to uncoil, turn around your spine going this way. That's really all a golf swing is. We all make it harder than it is. You know, as soon as I've gone through a stretch where I've I've not been quite as good going back. So on my forward swing, the only way I could hit it was I had to come up out of it this way. And now you have to slap it with this way. So, you know, I've had to go back and go, okay, well, what caused what? You know, this, this part didn't just happen. It, it was caused by something that I've done on my backswing. So, you know, I just, I went back and I, I go, okay, well, this is what I was doing on my backswing. I wasn't getting turned. I was lifting the club. So, you know, you, you, you get to a point in your game where you can kind of fix yourself and hopefully um, it's, it's sooner than later. Um, but, you know, I, I, think I, I think I'm talking more to the kids that are competitive, that are starting to play and, and uh, learn the game and stuff. Yeah, that's good. You know, one of the things that, um, and then I want to get into the mental part of the game and, and talk about st strategy and stuff like that. But what Tom's so right. I mean, one of the things that I got, I got all screwed up. That's why I put these balls down here. But where I really got messed up was when I would start, like Tom was saying, you know, lining up. You start lining up a little left and a little left, and the pressure's on, and and you know, you're you you need to good, shoot a good round and. You start going a little more left, a little more left. Before you know it, you're you're going way left here, and or way right. It could be either way. But boy, then you've got to really make some compensations, and all of a sudden you start. That's where your golf swing. I think that's what Tom is saying. Is that's what if you've got a good, if your fundamentals are really good, you're you have a good solid golf swing. Um, then if you go start lining up bad, that's when you start getting. Then you start having to make bad swings to hit the ball at the target. And that's where everything goes wrong. And I don't have any complaints about, uh, you know, playing golf, junior golf, ASU, the PGA Tour. I, I wish I wouldn't have got hurt and wish I, wish I could have kept playing. Uh, but the one thing I think I would have done a little different is, is put these balls in a line like this right here. And, and then, then I would have never gotten very far off. I would have got, first of all, I wouldn't have started lining up poorly. Like Tom's talking about, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. If I put those clubs down a lot when I practice, and I put these balls down, I, I would be able to tell after a while if that club started going out here a little bit too much, and maybe coming down over on this line here, I could tell that. And so one of the things I try to do with my students, if they start taking the club out here like this, uh, and and that really makes it hard to turn, like Tom was talking about, where you make a real good turn. If you take that club outside, you're not going to be able to turn very good. You're not going to get your weight shifted back as well. Um, and so, so that's what I'll do is I'll kick that guy away right there. And let's say, let's say the problem is the club's going outside and you're coming over here like this. Okay. Well, I'll take, I'll take this ball away here too, and then I'll say, okay. In fact, I had a, a gentleman today that I did this with, and then I'll just say, hey, feel like you're starting the club in here. Well, he went from out there to taking the club back pretty straight and it looked pretty good. But he felt like he was going over this ball right here. And then also he was kind of coming to the left. And so I said, hey, just feel like you're coming through here and going on out there a little bit more. And he started hitting the ball a lot better. I mean, usually it doesn't happen quite that fast. But um, Tom, if you have anything else you want to talk about technically. Uh, well, I, just, I was just going to say, I wouldn't, if for the kids that are, are starting and stuff, I wouldn't hit a shot on a practice range without something down on the ground. You know, you can get into a, you know, you can get into a rhythm of hitting shots, hitting shots, hitting shots, and it doesn't matter how you swing, the ball would go in the same place. So you can work yourself into, into hitting, not making any progress on the practice range because you're not aimed right, okay? You're consistently, just, either. Yeah, you're, just, you're not consistently. So, 
get these things, you can get these things about anywhere. And just put one of them down if you just have one, or put two of them down, whatever. But that gives you a base uh, to where, because I think the hardest thing in golf is, is what you what you're doing with your swing and what you feel like you're doing with your with your swing are two entirely different things. You know that's what I think the hardest deal for Paul is when he's teaching somebody. He'll go, well, you're doing this and you're doing this, and the guy's going in his head. He's going, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. But until until you get it on video to where you go, oh, I am doing that. So, but it, it's stuff like just putting this down, you know, putting clubs or this or... I used to use one of these things. Uh, I used to use one of these things and I'd put, I'd put it right outside of my golf ball, like that. Um, and then I'd hit, I'd hit shot after shot because I knew that I had to have the path online. I, had, I knew that I had to have my swing online, otherwise I was going to crash into that board. And you can crash into it going back, and you can crash into it going forward. So I used to get, and I'd, I would get, I'd buy a two by four, and I'd carry it with me. I'd go, I'd take it with me when I go out to practice. And I'd just sit up and I'd hit ball after ball, just one after another with that board right there. That wasn't You've been talking shot, too much. You've been talking too much. You got a little tight there. But, um, you know, I got to where I got to where now that that my, the path of my club was going right where I wanted it to. You know, if and it was kind of an instant feedback. If I'm hitting that thing, you know, you get to where I don't want to do that anymore. So, go ahead. No, it's just it's just anything you can do that will get your will set up a base for you that. When you get misaligned, you go, your, your subconscious will tell you, go, hey, I don't think you're, let's start over. Let's, let's, you know, let's, if we're out playing and we, don't, we can't use these things, a club or this or that, you know, I always pick out something in front of my golf ball. I always thought that it was a lot easier to aim at something this far away than it was 200 yards away. So I would just pick this spot out here and I'd set i get set up, I'd set up my club face to where I'm going right at that little deal there. Then I'd, I'd set my feet to the club face, and sometimes I wouldn't even look up at my target. Uh, right, before I, right before I make my swing, I look up at the target to go, okay, well, I need to hit this 185 yards. You know, I try and feel, get a feel for the distance. But, the, you know, the key is just to make sure that you're, you're aimed properly. That, that will solve a lot of issues. Um, you know, if you aim properly, you can you just make your, a good swing and you're going to hit a good shot. If you're aimed improperly, you can make the best swing in the world and hit a bad shot. Yeah, that's so. good. If you don't have this board around there, take a take a water bottle and stick it right there. You know, if you're taking the club outside, stick that water bottle right up against that club head. And, and I'll put tees back there sometimes, like uh, somebody's taking a driver or whatever. I'll put the tees, I'll get them real high, and they'll bang, 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 hit those tees. Or when they're coming down to hit the ball, they'll, they'll hit those tees, like Tom's saying, anything like that. Um, a water bottle's good because if you, if, you, if you go over the top of the water bottle, you may not hit that ball. You're going to smack that water bottle pretty good. Would you kind of help them, just tell them about how you do your pre-shot routine? Because what Tom, that was part of Tom's pre-shot routine, is, is he picks this spot out here, and he's had a chance to win some, and won some really big tournaments. And boy, when, you, when you're coming down the stretch, uh, and you've got a chance to win a tournament like that, you are nervous. I'm telling you, you can talk, you can talk about Tom Watson, or you can talk about Fred Couples, or you can talk about Tiger Woods, those guys are nervous. But they, they do the same thing over and over and over again. And that's why, you know, when he was standing in the last hole at the Phoenix Open, he's got a chance to win. He needs to make a birdie to win. He's got to, he's got to step up to that ball. He, he, he gets, he, he's looking at the line. He look, he observes what he's got. There's a lake to the right, and he's got bunkers to the left. 
and he's standing up there, 230 yards or 40 yards or however far, however far away you were. And he's standing up there. He can't be thinking about if I got my left arm straight, if I got my wrist in the right position. If I, he can't be thinking about this. So he's going to get up there and he's going he's to take a look at where he wants to go. And he's going to visualize that he wants to get that shot right there. And now he's going to step up there and he's going to line that club piece up with that spot right there. And let's say he's going to try to hit it fairly straight, this ball. And he's just going to take that swing and he's just going to let that swing go right over that spot. And let it go. Yeah, I feel like I'm just going to drive. I just feel like I'm going to drive the ball right over the top of that little spot. That's all I'm, when I when I when I get ready and I'm on go. I'm, that's all I'm thinking about. I'm not thinking about anything down here. I'm just basically thinking. Okay, I'm just going to try and drive this ball over that spot because I know that if if I do that, uh, two things are going to happen. I'm, I'm going to have I'm going to be accelerating through the ball. And I'm, and I'm just going to, I know that I'm going to get it pretty much online if I do those two things. Um, exactly. Tom, do, do you do that on all your irons and woods and chips and everything? Absolutely. Putts too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, same here. When I, was, when I was playing all the time, I, I tried to do the same thing. I guess, now, let's talk, go ahead, Tom. It's like, it's like if you watch a, a basketball player, a good free throw shooter, what does he do? He does the same exact thing every time. Bounces it twice, flips it this way. He'll, he'll do the same thing. And, and I think they've figured out that that is, you know, that, that has helped golfers too. You just try and do the same thing every time to where when you get into a pressure situation, you're not thinking about something different. You're just going through your routine. You're just going, okay, boom, 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 boom. And you hit a good shot. You know, you're not sitting up over there, like Paul said, you're not sitting up over it going, okay, well I got, let's keep my head still, let's keep my left arm straight. You know, you're not thinking about that stuff. You're thinking about hitting the shot where you want it to go. And it's like, if you go out, I would venture to say you could pick out any tour player and saying it's a, a tee shot. If you put a stopwatch on him, I'll venture to say that it would be about the same time that he, you know, once he got up over his ball, it would be about the same time every time he hit it. You know, consider if, 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 if he's playing good, if he's in the last couple of groups. You know, you don't, you don't want to get into a situation where this shot, you know, you've got a shot on the 72nd hole and you're standing over it for two minutes where normally you stand over it for a minute. Uh, if yeah. you, you want it, that's why that that's why it's so important the uh, the routine that you have. You know, they, they timed Schnedeker at the Pebble Beach. And it was 13 seconds every single. Yeah, boy, I he's fast, but it was a they had a clock on him. Uncanny. Yeah, and there, it, there's a guy. You young guys, man, I'd watch that guy play a little bit. He can putt. He's got a great putting stroke. He's got a he can, and he hits the ball well. You know, I, you know, when I, I went out on Tuesday to watch the guys practice, Tom, and what what I was amazed at, I, here's Brant Snedeker. He finished Monday afternoon, or Monday, uh, probably afternoon, and I went out there on t Tuesday afternoon. He's out there playing a practice round. Well, he's going to play in the, in the Pro-Am on Sunday. So here's a guy that's working hard, and I'm thinking, well, you know what? I bet I'm going to see this guy at the top of the leaderboard at the end of this tournament. I wouldn't be surprised if he wins the tournament. He almost did. And then he goes and wins the next week. Um, hard work. You know, to what Tom's saying, go ahead and hit some, keep hitting some shots. Tom. The one thing that Tom, and we'll wrap this up, but Tom, uh, one thing Tom said a minute ago is like when, when oh, I'll get out, of your way, get out of the camera way here. Uh, one of the things he said is a big deal is, um, you know, when you're, coming down that tournament you're you're focusing on that spot you're going to try to get that club go right over that spot that's the most important thing now to get to in that position to do that he's worked on his golf swing a lot he's worked on his alignment a lot his posture a lot he's worked on getting behind the ball and getting the right position up here and so he's fundamentally he's really solid okay and most of the guys that, and gals that you see on the and the LPGA and the PGA tour they're really solid with their fundamentals, so they work hard on that. 
But when it gets down to playing in the tournament, you got to go with what you got. If you're hitting a little fade out there, then you got to play that fade. If you got, if you're drawing that ball, then you got to go with that draw. And here's the thing about mental, the mental side of the game is really not, in my, in my opinion, Tom may have a different opinion here, but in my opinion, it's not that big a deal. It's like, it's more strategy, okay? You stand up there and you're, ball, you're, you're drawing the ball a little bit. The pin's over on the right side of the green, okay? And you're drawing that ball, okay? Now, what are you gonna do? I'm one shot behind and I need to make a birdie, okay? And I got three holes to go. Well, you don't fire it at that pin over there. You try to knock the ball into the middle of the green and make it, like Tom saying, make, that's why you practice putting and you're a, you're a great putter because you want to knock that ball on that green, hopefully you can make it from 30 feet or 35 feet or whatever, and then you go to the next hole. And then let's see, maybe the situation's a little different. The pin's in the middle, pin's on the left. Now you go ahead and knock, knock and try to hit it in the middle of the green, let it draw a little bit, get by the hole. But I see, and I saw this in college a lot, is I'd see my guys and they, you know, this guy's drawing it and pins over and right, he's playing real good and bam, he tries to hit it at that pin. He misses it on the short side and makes a double bogey. And now he's out of the tournament, okay? I can't tell, and plus that took the team, <laughs> the double bogey and the coach is going, oh my gosh, what's going on? Ron's over here, he's coaching. He knows what I'm talking about, you know? And he, oh my gosh, what's he doing, you know? Uh, or she's doing, you know? So. I think a lot of the mental part of the game is a relaxing, you know, taking a big deep breath when before you get ready to hit a shot. Especially if you're in, you're down to the wire, you got a chance to win the tournament, or your team has a chance to win, or whatever. Keep breathing. Um, I never forget David Tom's PGA Championship. He's standing there. He hit a drive, and he's about 220 yards away. And Phil Mickelson's in the clubhouse and, and David Tom stands back there and he's getting ready to hit this two iron or whatever out of a bad lie. He's up here like this and he takes that club out and he sticks it back in a bag and he put, takes out his seven iron and he hits it down there about 140 yards or whatever, or 50, 60 yards, whatever he hit it. And maybe it was an eight iron, maybe it was a nine iron or whatever. And he left himself about 100 yards. He takes this wedge, he hits this wedge up there, knocks it about eight feet, makes a putt, wins the PGA. So you don't have to, you don't have to, just because you're 250 yards away, that doesn't mean you have to try to knock the ball in the green or 240 or whatever. If there's problems up there, if you could, if you hit it to the right, you make, you're going to make a bogey or a double bogey. Well, you don't want to be doing that on a par five. You want the worst score you want to make is a par. Does that, does that make any sense to anybody? And trust me, don't get me wrong. I think that you shouldn't be laying up all the time. I think you should try to hit it as close to the green as you can and try to get it up and down. But once in a while, you're going to have that situation where, see, there was a lake in front of the green. That's why he, that's why he, he could, if he, he thinned it a little bit or didn't hit it real good, he knocks it in the water, he's out of the tournament. He's definitely not winning. So, anyway. Um, I would the say, last thing, last thing I want to say is for, for you guys that are you know, getting, getting playing and, and trying to get better, make practice fun. You know, and, and you can you can do it you can do it by yourself. You know, play games. Say, well, I'm going to take three balls and I'm going to putt six holes and I'm going to two putt every hole. Um, or, or take come out with a buddy and just just have little games, chipping games around the around the chipping green or whatever, putting yep. green or whatever. Keep playing matches. That's how you know if you're getting better. You know, play. Play your buddy, you know, say, let's go putt. And you don't really have to putt it for anything. Uh, but because you're trying to beat this guy, this guy's trying to beat this guy. You know, I mean, it, it, you don't have to, you don't have to bet anything. Just, you're just trying to, you're just trying to beat him by one shot. But that's how you keep, that's how you get, and that's how you keep, you know, the competition thing going. You know, it's, it, it just, Taking three balls and going over to the putting green and just going doesn't really do much. I mean, if you're working on your stroke, yeah, that's a different thing. But I mean, at the end of the day, you, when you leave that putting green, always finish on a good note and always finish playing. You know, do it playing a game in your in your head. You know, if you're just by yourself, I'm going to play nine holes and I'm going to try and make three three of them, and I'm going to try and to putt the rest of them. Um.
Yeah, that's good. I, you know what? We, we, he, I'm sure he did the same thing I did, but I mean, I'd take a Titleist one and a Titleist two and a Titleist three, and I'd, I'd play little matches. You know, if I was by myself, if I if I had my friends with me, I'd try to do that too. And um, maybe if you're a lot better than your friend is, then you got to give them a little bit of a handicap. Maybe you say, okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, give but that's you. how he gets better. <laughs> well, it is. That's how that's how your buddy gets better by yep. by trying to keep up with you. I mean, that's what you know. He was always a lot better than I was when I was a kid, but. He always would let me play with him and his all his older guys. So I had to get better in a hurry. Otherwise, I'd get trounced. So that helped me out a lot. But you, you know, if you play with somebody better than you are, you try and you try and get to their level. Um, yeah. So that's a good thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I would say, you know, go watch. Anytime you can watch somebody compete, go do that. Like if it's a Champions Tour tournament, it's a, it's the PGA or it's the LPGA. Go watch those people compete, and especially if you can, the last day when they're coming down, watch those last two or three groups, how they're playing, and watch how they handle themselves when the pressure's really on. Okay, it's really great. Or even the club championship, or whatever, or your high school matches. You guys that maybe are the fourth or fifth guy. If, you, if, they, if they'll allow you to do this, go walk back out there and watch the number one guys finish up, you know. Um, anything you can do to go out and watch people compete, especially people that are competing at a high level, that, that's a great thing to do. Yeah, the, other, the other thing about that is you will also see that, hey, these guys are the best at what they do, and they don't hit every shot just right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. You know, so... Um, I think a lot of times, you know, guys that are announcers and they decide to come back and play, they play a lot better after they've watched these guys play because they realize that, hey, you don't have to hit it 10 feet every hole. You know, you just get, you just give yourself opportunities to make 20 footers, whatever. A lot of times they go in, um, but you just, you know, you, you, you have to give yourself the opportunity to make pars, make birdies. Um, and not everybody hits it like Tiger Woods. Pre-2004. <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, you, you'll, you'll figure out, in, in this game, the game's hard. The game, it's, it's a tough game, but it's a great game because it's different every day you go out and play. You know, I've had so many days where I've gone you know, I'll leave. I'll leave that day, and I go, man, I got it now. I, I, I'm going to play good for for two months or three months or whatever. And you come out, and you, you, you hit a couple balls, and you go, whoa, what what, where did it go? So it, you know, it's it's a tough game. You just have to kind of you know be your own best friend when you're out there playing. You know, don't beat yourself up. That is way counterproductive. You young guys, listen to that. You know, I know you'd never do that, and ladies, you know, I know none of you guys would do that. But, but, but I mean, th this, is from ex this is from experience, this is from personal experience, this is from watching other people. You know, you, you've got to be your own best friend. You know, give, your pat on the, give yourself a pat on the back when you need to. You know, occasionally you might need to give yourself a kick. But yeah. Encourage yourself. Yeah, just... <laughs> Yeah, I just, can. Don't forget, I can when you guys are out there playing. You know? and, and and also, you know, read some read books that will do things. Read books that will keep you positive. That will keep your 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 brain going in the right direction. You know, don't let it get don't let it uh, get to where you you get negative. On, on anything, you just can't do it. You can't afford to. If you're going to play this game, you're you're way better off having some sort of a positive attitude than you are a negative attitude. I don't know of one. I don't know of one really good player that has a bad attitude. And when he says really good, he's talking about the great ones, right? Tom? Well, I, I, anybody on tour, <laughs> right? I mean, you could, there, right. There's, I know guys that have million-dollar swings. That that don't they don't get to their potential because they're they, they've got 
something going on in their head that won't allow them to succeed. You know, it's, I mean, I, I can think of a guy right now that's got one of the best swings I've ever seen. And he'll shoot 84 every once in a while. You know, and so you do go, why? How can well, that be? And, and it's, it all has to do with your, your outlook, you know, your, your attitude, just trusting your abilities. You know, that's the thing. You, you, you come out here, you practice as hard as you can, you, you, you go through all your stuff, you practice, practice, practice. Then you go out on the golf course, you trust what you've done here, out there. You know, don't be thinking about, is my left arm straight, or am I getting it turned back? Once you get on the golf course, just play. You know, go through, go through your routine, Try and do the same things you've done at, on the practice range. But it's more about making cars and birdies out there. It's not about being pretty. It's not about hitting great shots, you know, this far away from the pin. And not, not being able to make it. You know, so it's, it's, there's a lot to the game. And you can make it as hard as you want, as hard on yourself as you can. Or you can make it as easy as yourself what you can. Yeah. yeah, that's really good advice. I um, mean, you, you know, you can be hard on yourself all through on the practice tee and working really hard technically to get the club in the right spot or, you know, make sure you're turning good. You know, Ben Hogan in his book, he had one of, one of the greatest illustrations I think I've ever seen of, of really what, what should happen in a golf swing. And it's like he has his medicine ball here like this and he takes that medicine ball here and when he goes, he's going to throw that medicine ball down here. He's going to get right here, and he's, well, how are you going to throw that ball down there? You're not going to go like that and throw that ball anywhere. You know, you got to throw that ball from right here. you got to use your whole body, your whole lower body, and everything's got to go together to throw that ball as far as you can throw it. And that's one of the things that Tom's had a real powerful swing. He's been the longest driver on the PGA Tour, and he was the longest on the Champions Tour for probably five out of, you know, I don't know how, five out of six, eight years or whatever. So he's not only got a good looking golf swing, but it's a very powerful one. And I've always said that, you know, to my juniors and, and to, to my students, I say, you don't have to give up distance uh, for direction. You know, it's all about hitting the ball solid and making good strokes and you're gonna hit the ball farther, you're gonna hit it straighter, eventually, okay? Um, I just wanna kind of wrap this up and then if anybody else wants to ask us some, any questions, Yes, sir, Bob. I was wondering when you said you have a now target I'm area in front of your ball, like how far in front ahead. of your ball do you prefer a target? I think that's up to you. You know, I try and pick something out about, you know, in between a foot and two feet. I don't want to. I don't want to get it out past two feet, uh, and it, I don't think it does any good to get it right in front of the ball. And I think you want to have something, you know, about a. a to me, the best thing is about a foot. Because I can still, I'm still visualizing that I, that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna go through that, that little, whatever I pick out. And you can always pick out something, you know, on a, on a, like on a par three. That's easy because what I do is I pick out something before I even, before I tee it up. I've got a spot in mind, and I'll go, I'll go. Uh, that's my spot. So I'll, I'll be. I'll, I'll know that that's right where I want to get it started. You know, if I'm going to draw it or fade it or whatever, this is going to be on my target line. You know, right of the target if I'm going to draw it, left if I'm going to fade it. And then, then I'll take that spot here, I'll put that, and then I'll tee my ball up here. So that's e the par threes are easy. Tee shot, any tee shot's easy because you, you, you determine where you're going to put the ball, right? And second shots, iron shots, whatever, in the fairway or the rough, there's always some little, some something that you can use as a target. I mean, I've played a lot of years, and, and I can't think of one or two times that it's that it's been that I haven't been able to get something. Greens are a little tougher. You know, sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta work at getting finding a piece of sand or something to pick up. But, so greens are a little tougher, but shots, most shots, you can, you can always pick up something.
greens for him, all those greens are perfect out there that he played. He didn't have any spots, there's no ball marks, and he says, Shh, and they're quick too. Uh, well, let me just, yeah, go ahead, question. Dave. On the mental part of it, um, you, you work on, you know, part of it is part of your practice, right? Right. And then when you're out there playing golf, it's uh, your routine kind of, you know, you're working with your routines throughout the game. Is there anything else you do mentally to prepare for a tournament? Um, work on a short game. <laughs> yeah, but that's but mentally, <laughs> mentally, I'll when I've played when I've had my best tournaments, I've always done something at night. Uh, <coughs> read read something, you know, read a Rotella book or there, there's a, a lot of books out now that are, are in, in um, that are that are geared to help you mentally play. I mean, when we played. There wasn't, I don't know, I don't think there was one book, Psycho Cybernetics. <laughs> yeah. But that was so hard to read that, I mean, it's like Chinese. You gotta Chinese, be a doctor to understand that Chinese. one. Chinese, but, um, but now, I mean, there's, I'll bet, if you went to a bookstore, I'll bet there's 15 books on, on golf, specifically golf, and the mental stuff. It's just, you know, the mental part of it, anything that you can do to, to get your focus, you know? Instead of instead of your focus being All over anywhere place, yeah. but this, you know, just try and get, just try and focus. It, you know how long? It, I don't know how. I don't know exactly how long it takes you. 13 seconds or whatever, but it doesn't take you very long to to hit your shot, right? So it's not like you have to be, you know, in, in 18 holes. What's 13 seconds times uh, how many hour shots you're going to take? Not very long. So that's really all the time that you're that you want to be really focused. You know, on, yeah. you know, when you after you hit your shot, man, look, check out some birds or do something. Get, a, yeah. get, don't just, don't just try and stay zeroed in. Right, you know? you'd be totally exhausted by the end of the day. <laughs> right, you get away. You know, you you hit your shot. If you want to decide, if you if you didn't hit it where you want to, go take a minute and go. Uh, I just don't think I was aiming properly. You know, or, or my tempo got a little quick. You know, I wasn't as committed to the shot before I hit it. So any any type of stuff like that can take away from uh, a good shot. So uh, I, I think it's just a matter of doing something to help you get focused. Yeah. You, you know, know you, you can. I. I I, when, I, when I'm out practicing, if I'm trying to do something, you know, like, you know, a lot of times I'll try and make sure that I get my right shoulder back. When I do that, I'm not going through my routine. But pretty much every practice session I have, I'll take a couple minutes and hit shots where all I'm doing is going through my routine. You know, just, you know, you know I, I basically try and I, I, I don't really take a practice swing. You know, I, I'm, what, I'm, I'm back away from the ball, you know, and I'll, I'll do something back here, you know, trying to go, okay, well, let's get your right shoulder back or do this or that. But once I get up there, I'm, all I'm doing is I've got my spot, I've gone through this, this part of my routine, uh, and then I'll waggle twice, and then boom, then I'll go. So, and it, you know, it's different for everybody. You know, you, you figure out what works best for you. you know, a lot of, sometimes, uh, sometimes people, you know, they'll, they'll take two practice swings and then they'll get in there and they'll, they'll do something, you know, with a couple of waggles. But, and the other thing is, I keep thinking about stuff, but when you're getting ready to hit your shot, do not, under any circumstances, sit there with the club just static, okay? Always keep moving. Keep your feet moving. Keep the club moving. Um, because as soon as, you, as soon as you get over the ball and you go, whoop, what happens? Everything kind of tightens up. You know, you, you want these muscles nice and loose and relaxed. Uh, long muscles you want. As soon as you get, as soon as you get over it and you go, okay, I'm gonna, am I, is this right, is this right, is this right, and you haven't moved any, all of a sudden it becomes harder for you to get the club 
moving away from the ball. Yeah. You know, if you can keep moving, if you can keep your keep your hands, your feet, you, you know, waggle a little bit. And this is kind of a this is kind of a precursor to your swing. Uh, when you waggle, you know, if Hogan's a great example of that. I mean, he loved, he 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 waggled, you know, kind of this way. He waggled he because he wanted that club to kind of kind of it's square, but it, it's it's almost looks like it's opening. Um, but uh, yeah, because he tried to hit a fade, you know, so he'd want he wouldn't want his club face a little bit close. He'd want it a little bit open. Any other um, questions? You know, one thing Tom brought up, uh, he, you know, he, he's right. I mean, everybody's in a different place here. Uh, you know, I can't, when there's th this many people, there's everybody's in a different spot. Some of you guys <clears throat> and ladies probably need to get your technique better. You're not hitting the ball like you want to hit it. Maybe your grip's not right or whatever. Some of you are hitting the ball good, but you're not, when you get under pressure and you get in a tournament, it's not going, it's not, do, you're not playing well. You know, now that could be uh, some some poor mechanics. Um, it could be poor fundamentals that are just showing up there out out there on the tournament. And then some of you are playing great, and then basically, like Tom's saying, when you know what we're talking about, there's two, there's three phases here. One phase is is you're trying to get your technique right. You're trying to improve your technique. The next phase is once you get that down, now you're going out there and you're trying to just strictly think about where you're trying to hit the ball and what kind of shot you're trying to hit. And then, um, the, you know, the final one is really when you're, you're just looking at that, you're doing your pre-shot routine, you're looking at that target and bam, you're going. Um, so that's, that's, that's kind of where you want to get. Tom brought up Bob Rotella's name. Let me tell you something. I had my guys at Grand Canyon, I had them read four different books in, that summer. Okay, and last year, and they came back different guys when they came back. One of them was Zig Ziglar's book. It's called See You at the Top. And I would highly recommend everybody here read that book because it's an incredible book. Um, next to the Bible is probably the greatest book that was ever written. Okay. Um, next one would be, um, you know, Rotella's book called uh, It's How to Play Great Golf. And I can't remember it's the, the male game or something like that. I can't remember the title. Tom, go ahead and hit some shots while I'm talking, then they can, so they can watch your swing. Um, that's a great book. Um, I'm trying to think. I had I read, Adam, uh, read Hogan's book and Watson's book, and they came back, and they most of those guys came back to me and said, "Wow, I, I just I learned so much by reading those books." And then hopefully in a few years, when our book comes out, I'll say, "Hey, now you guys got to go read our book." But basically, um, those are Tom's right. When you go out and practice, you can be hard on yourself on the practice tee. And you've got to get yourself in the right spot. But when you go compete, you can't talk to yourself like, oh, what an idiot. How can you hit the ball over there in the lake? You can't say that to yourself. you got to go, hey, you know what? What did I, How did I do that? How did I get How did I get that ball over there? you got to be a cool, calm. Because if you're going to, Zig Ziglar said something. He said, you got to think like a champion, act like a champion, see yourself as a champion, and perform like a champion. Before you can be a champion. Yeah, before you're going to be a champ. And boy, I'll tell you, that's it. And you, how many times do you see guys, I see a lot of college guys, high school, I see those guys hit a bad shot, and I'm telling you, I was one of them. Okay, that, you know, throw my club down, you know, pick up my bag, jam it down there, break the bag, toss my folks money. They should have had me paying for the bag to fix it. But it never did me any good ever did me any good. Not one time did I get my anger do me any good. Finally, after I read Zig's book, and Tom and I were fortunate to go to his class down there in Dallas, and I'm telling you, we learned a lot there. And Tom's, Tom's saying it, when he, after he went there, I, I'm trying to think, he was, I don't know what year that was, that 77 or 78 or something like that? He was right around there. And then Tom won the you know, he wants a big tournament, the World Series of Golf, the greatest players in the world, like this tournament right down here. They were all playing there. And he won that tournament. He won the he won the uh, the same year, he won the Colonial Invitational in Fort Worth. Fort Worth, the Colonial Country Club, one of the great golf courses ever. But that the way you talk to yourself out there is really important. Okay? You gotta be an encouragement to yourselves when you're out there playing because the game's real tough. And it's a great game. And I and I wrote this down here because I want to make sure I, I mention this to you guys. This is a fantastic game. It's a, 
and I hope you all love and respect the game. It's been great to Tom and I. We've, um, you know, we've learned some great lessons through it, um, and I'm so thankful my dad, you know, got us started and encouraged us and got us to play in tournaments around the country and stuff. We were fortunate to do that. But whether you can do that or not, you can still be a great player. Um, you know, the game teaches us self-discipline, mental focus, and all that stuff. You know, there's some real successful men here. Mr. Marriott, Mr. Pinkerton, Ron, all the rest of you fellas I know are very successful people. And it takes that kind of focus and that kind of self-discipline to be successful at what you do. Um, and Doug was a great baseball player at Arizona State. Uh, he, you know, you got to have that mental focus and that mental and that self-discipline to stand out there till it's dark. I mean, Tom and I, we practice. We get out of school and we practice till the sun went down, till we couldn't see anymore, and we go home. We we're fortunate enough to our folks could let us do that. But that's kind of what it takes. And I'm telling you, Roy, you look at Roy McIlroy. He makes the game look real easy. Tiger Woods makes it look real easy. This guy makes it look real easy when he hits it. But there's a lot of work that's gone into those swings and a lot of and those putting strokes. That Brand Snedeker, there's a lot. He's hit a lot of putts, you guys and gals. And um, you know, we just hope that if you got one thing out of what we said today, uh, we hope it'll help you. Thanks for your time and attention.